Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're here in Katy, Texas at Precision Welding Academy, where the motto is hard work, dedication, and no excuses. So today we're gonna to be here showing our students how to brother-in-law a pipe, whether it's in a power plant or on boiler tubes. In welding school, students learn how to perfect the coupon. They learn how to weld really well on a plate or a piece of pipe in a fixed position, but they always have to do it on their own. Now getting off into the real world, you might end up welding with a partner. And this is going to simulate welding with a partner on big diameter pipe where you might end up finding it somewhere in the power plant sections, refineries, new construction, turnarounds, shutdowns, all that good stuff. So let's get into it. We've got our pipe, it's already tacked, it's fit together. So now we got to talk about getting underneath, lighting up, communicating. Got this fit up, we discussed what kind of gap we would like, what we're used to. I'm going to freehand, I don't want to hit his hand as he's going. Ready? Yes sir. Now as I start working my way up, I don't have to wait on Scott. I can get to the top. If I knew that he was having trouble with his ground, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I don't wanna make him look bad, right? We're working together as a team. And also okay. discuss with him, because he just quartered over here, we need to figure out if we should quarter on the opposite side so it don't pull. If this was prefab pipe, where we're actually putting it together in the shop, we wanna be conscious of keeping everything square. We're building things on jack stands. This stuff's gonna move. We're gonna put a lot of heat into it. We wanna check square, level, all that kind of stuff as we're welding. If I can't look on the other side of the pipe with my root, Scott's gonna let me know. He's gonna watch me put my bead in. He's gonna watch, uh, you know, safely with either his hood or just with a flashlight on that other side. Also remember, if you guys are new and you come up to a fit and you're with someone that's experienced, talk to them and actually let them know, hey, never done something like this. Um, this gap's a little bigger. Can you watch me a little bit? Can you kind of guide me a little bit? Now I'm gonna light up. And we're just gonna work our way up to the top. I know he's gonna be behind me. If he wants or he's feeling any kind of question on his route, he'll let me know and then I'll stop what I'm doing to pay attention to what he's doing. And now let's play pretend. I just made a boo-boo. The problem with lighting up a grinder right here is this thing, what does that do? What's bad for TIG welding? Air, anything but argon, some inert gas coverage. So if I go to grind on this, I'm not only throwing sparks through that bevel, I'm throwing air to the backside of his root. What's that gonna do to him now? It's gonna give him porosity and now we're both mad. So when he stops, then we can communicate, hey, let me feather this real quick. Grind out the boo-boo, right? I want to grind at the same time. Hold on. Some welders, they are peculiar about how they want their tacks feathered, right? Me, I didn't, I didn't feather nothing on the side. I like it like that. But here on the top, we really want to guarantee that tie-in, and that's the last tie-in that we can't see, right? We can look and see if we're grabbing everything from this point. We can look through that gap. But here at the top, we can't tell. So it's nice to get that either feathered or even sometimes cut it out and then just tie in. I'm at 120 on this machine over here. I, I think you're still at 110. Why are you running hotter? Because I'm, I'm faster. Oh. Plus my gap was tied to There you go. Yeah, I got a pretty wide one over here. You have to be mindful of where your partner is at all times. As I'm welding, I can kind of see in the corner of my eye where his hand is. So once you know that one guy will stop, just let him get all the way to the top. Hey, I said let him get to the top. Oh yeah. Ryan, you burn up my gloves and make me get a little finger. I'm popping you on the head with this hot wire. As he's welding, I'm gonna just look through that gap while he's kind of walking it in. I'm just gonna make sure he ain't got no nipples or lack of fusion on there. And remember, if he burns me, the only payback is I burn him. Burns the rules. I burn him. At this point, he could be looking through that gap, making sure it all fuses. Without burning his eyes, probably not. He's too high up. Nah, we're good. And remember, communicate that with the partner. Which side do you guys prefer? Tight side, wide side? Honestly, you'll probably work with someone that is the complete opposite of you. And man, once you find the right partner, like you know they all work together, stay together, man. It didn't bother coming into work today, drank too much last night. They didn't come to work, now it's now you're you're in a bind, right? That's not the type of partner you want. Tossing that TIG torch over the pipe, it could come around, swing, and if that thing is hot and grounded, you just burn the man chop his, his privates, right? This thing is live, it's grounded, you put arc strikes on it, it's on y'all, right? 
Same thing with wire wheels. They don't throw as many sparks, but what do they throw? Wire. Wire. So make sure y'all communicate that. So while he's on the bottom, I'm up on the side getting it cleaned up. As soon as he goes up top, I come down. As I watched him turn, I was turning as well so our sparks were not hitting each other. And guess what? What happens if y'all decide to do dueling grinders? You come right up at the top together and kiss. Yeah, Knocking grinding wheels with someone, that's scary. And that's a good way to get someone hurt. All right, now we're gonna bump her up. 200 amps, please. Is that 200? 200? 200-ish, that's fine. So, as far as freehand or walk, it doesn't matter. Just know whose side of the pipe is who. Y'all gotta put your stencils on it. Have your stencils on there, where you stopped, where you finish. You know, communicate. If you see a problem, fix it then. You see it, fix it. Don't weld anymore, fix it, right? That's so for we usually leave a window at top so we can check it and make sure that everything is good. Yeah, about at this point, usually they'll let you leave a big open gap and call the QC to check your route before you can close it up. So if y'all aren't communicating who's holding the window, then you close it up, they're gonna get mad at you and make you cut it back open and that's never fun, right? But all these rules so far, we got the bead in this pipe, all the rules are the same from here on out. So if you guys just wanna check us out as we're welding, uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. If someone could give me some longer wire, I can't weld long enough with that. Once you guys get out the field, you guys aren't cutting them this long anymore. They're yeah. going to be full length wire the whole day. It just, yeah, you're going to be like, one, it's a waste. Your stubs are now doubled, two, it's just slower. You're, you're trying to weld, right? Now, you see how I'm going to freehand mine. His hand's in the way, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit till he's a good amount over here. But that's, he's running at about 200 amps. He should be there pretty quick. With these lenses, you should be able to see pretty close who's on side of you. If you can't see, you're probably too dark. All right, now, his gloves pretty close where I can start going. There we go. Ooh. That little pot when I come up to the side had an air pocket from whenever I stopped out root pass. I'm pulling out. So if you're ever putting your hot pass in on your root and you see something pop, pop back at you, it's because you left the fish eye on a tie-in. Very much likely that that's the case. So one other tip, when you're on the top and on the bottom tie-ins, don't just start right where he left off. Start ahead of it. Grinding disc, cause I made a mistake. You gotta communicate with anyone in the way. Unless you just like it like that, or you want a bunch of it in your face, I won't stop you. The reason I like freehanding, you can shove a lot, but freehand, you're literally all in control and the whole time you're just shoving. So. I'm gonna walk the rest, so now I'm gonna have to wait a little bit more until he gets more up on that side. As Soon as he gets more up on that side, I'm gonna light up and then I'm just gonna flush that out, ready for my cap. No matter if you're trying to walk the cup or freehand it, keep it in communication with your partner how fast you're filling because you both wanna be capping about the exact same time. Now personally, I like me a fixed shade lens. That's what I'm running, it's not auto dark. If I go and have this auto dark, I'm gonna be flashing all the time when he's working, I'm trying to work. You know, I just keep my face out of it. Vintage View, I think makes the best fixed shade lenses if you need one. So now I'm gonna get back down to the bottom. I'm gonna do kind of what he's doing now. We'll call it the butter pass. When I'm capping with a partner, I like to do our caps separate and one at a time. That way I get plenty of room and space to put the nicest weld possible, and then I get to go watch them to make sure that I can see any new techniques that may improve my own skills. tubes, water walls, getting inside power plants, you know, there's going to be a tight spot. This is typically going to be a lot wider, a lot bigger. There's no way for me to make this weld quickly and efficiently if I had to get out of the boiler, come back around. So it's going to be a partner on the other side. Some of the stuff is still going to be the same as far as communicating with them, letting them know when you're grinding, when you're lighting up. You're typically going to be running a die grinder in these tight spots. And obviously our arcs are gonna be really close to one another. When it comes to welding with a partner in a boiler, wherever he goes, I go. If he's gotta to go to the bathroom, I go to the bathroom. 
If he's going to be on break, I'm going to break. The point is, if he's here and I'm not, then he looks bad. right? I look bad too, but he's sitting there. He can't work until we're both here. So to make sure everyone is working together, y'all got to be basically attached to the hip. All right, so understand that when working in tubes, always be together, okay? You are one. Right? When you find a good partner, never let him go, okay? My good friend Lucky Welds, if y'all follow him on Instagram, he dropped that. He welds in tubes and boilers his whole life. When you find your partner, you stick with him. The next thing we'll talk about is tacking these tubes. Where do you tack the tubes, Scott? I tack mine on the sides. That way I can branch off it, meet in the middle. Then I can go left hand, branch off it, meet in the middle. And as I'm doing that, he's doing the same exact thing, but he's going to be opposite of me. If I light on this quarter, he's got to be lit on that quarter. So we also use a die grinder. If I'm about to put in here, this thing puts off a lot of metal chips, and they're hot as the dickens. Hot so as the dickens. If I tell him, hey, I'm about to grind, make sure he knows I'm about to grind. Get in there and feather that tack a little bit. Be really careful, this thing will rattle on you. I don't know if y'all saw that, but you can't put a bunch of marks on this pipe. Then we got a number nine torch, this little mini rig. It's rated for 120 amps. Yeah. Closer you get to 120, it starts getting hot. But we use these mini rigs because they can get in these spots a lot easier. They're not like that 26 FV you guys got, the 17. Those get a little bit hot, uh, a little bit bigger, and they can't get in here. If you're running big pipe like we were just doing over there, then yeah, the bigger pipe, uh, the bigger torch is going to be perfect. So what you typically do is light up on these sides and y'all both work towards the center. Okay, that's the easiest way to not have to hand off any arcs or anything like that. So I light up right here. Got that flex neck, we're going to get light up. Hey buddy, I'm about to spark. He's going to go, we're going to weld one quarter. One quarter, right buddy? Run one quarter. One quarter. We're gonna watch that bead soak in. We're just breaking down these walls using this ESOB Mini Rogue. About 100 amps. And you guys can go higher on the amperage. We're just keeping it at about 100. We're not going crazy with this, but if you're in a time crunch, then run those things a little bit hotter. This right here, this edge, that start is a little humped up. This is where you talk about that grinding some more. Get in there with that die grinder, make sure everything's feathered. And typically, he'd have one of these on his side. Yeah. When I'm tying in, I like to make sure that I know for a fact it's gonna penetrate and it's gonna blend in properly. But you see how he's checking the root? These are windows. Make sure you're leaving a window and every time you run a bead, you check inside. When you get real slick, you should already know that it's in there. It's but every now and then, don't. No, right. it's good, it's good. It's pretty good. <laughs> One, two, go. Um, now we got the bead in, now we just go to weld it out. We need to clean it up any, this is where we go to clean it up. So we're gonna hand off the arc, I'm gonna weld my side. I'm gonna reach over as far as I can. They won't let me out. So I don't shoot on him. And once I know that I can't fill it up anymore, I can't get that wire in there, I gotta hold it at him and we're gonna hand it all off to each other. You ready, Scott? You let me know when you're ready. I'm about needing that wire about now. Okay. And wires in. And keep going, keep going. As soon as he gets to a certain spot, I'll grab that puddle. And there. And then once he comes back around, he'll get to that same spot. And I gotta be ready with that wire until he catches that tie in. We're not looking to put any pretty on this type of stuff. We're in a bind, we're in a tight spot. We're looking to break down the wall, make quality well. No matter what it looks like. X-ray don't show pretty, X-ray shows clean. My tungsten's gone. Huh? My tungsten's gone. That's amateur work. I hit a pocket, of, an air pocket like uh, Austin was talking about over at that 10 inch. So just always watch out for that. Light.
Be sure when you get, he gets to coming around to tie into me, I got that gas ready for him. It's on there. It's helping him out too. All right, I'm ready. Grab your wire. There you go. There you go. Keep going. Get a little bit on the bottom. All right, right there. So he can't see that last tie in. I can. So I got to be talking to him. So that's one way. But again, you don't have to do it like that. If you do reach as far over as you can go, as long as it's past that side, then you can weld towards the center here. And that's what we're going to do for the cap. He'll weld a quarter, I'll weld a quarter. He'll weld a quarter and then we don't have to really do as much communicating. It's really a lot easier. You know, as Lucky would say, you can make a tube welder a pipe welder, but it's hard to make a pipe welder a tube welder, and I believe that now. One quick tip, guys, if you need to break your all the way big tungsten into something that fits something like a mini rig right here, you want to break it down, get yourself a crescent wrench and your wire cutters. You pretty much always got them on you. Set these wire cutters back the distance that you need, just like that. Set that crescent wrench right with the edge of those cutters and then just bend it, okay? Clean break every time, you never cut it. And if you go to try to smack it with something, it's gonna fly somewhere else. Here's a quick tip for you. As always, everyone, thanks for watching the channel. I hope this helps so that you have a good idea what it's like to brother-in-law to pipe at a power plant. If you guys are looking for a school to come into for some real world training, Come to PWA, come check us out. We do MIG, TIG, stick, flux cord, downhill, whatever you want to learn, we teach it. Healy Arc in the dark on a broken heart with the best in the business. <laughs>